This is the Bio211 lab for the respiratory system, and in this video we're going to talk about the pulmonary lobule. Now please look for this figure in your textbook that shows you your bronchial branches and it goes all the way down to your alveoli. And we already talked about the bronchus first. And imagine when you think about the air passing through the trachea, it will travel through my primary bronchus, then it will travel through my secondary bronchus, and then down into my tertiary bronchus. Now, if you follow that tertiary bronchi all the way down, we have smaller branches called smaller bronchi, but you don't really need to know them for this class, but we do know that we have smaller branches that come off that tertiary bronchi. Now, for this video, we're going to focus more on this region right here. We're going to focus on after we leave the smaller bronchi, we're going to have air extend down to the bronchiole, the terminal bronchiole, down to the respiratory bronchiole, and even down to the alveoli where gas exchange takes place. Now please find this figure here. This shows you a great textbook figure of what I'm talking about. Again, you can see my primary bronchus here, my secondary bronchus here, and my tertiary bronchus here where I've drawn that circles. And it leads all the way down to this section right here, and that's what we're going to focus on. This is where our bronchiole is located, terminal and respiratory bronchioles, all the way down to your alveoli. So let's blow up this picture that I've just circled into the larger picture on this uh, image here. And you can see my bronchiole pretty well there, bringing air down into the lungs, and that travels into my terminal bronchiole, and then eventually to my respiratory bronchiole. Now, as the air passes through my respiratory bronchial, it will travel through a series of ducts, and we call those alveolar ducts. And there are several of them, and these alveolar ducts supply air to all your alveoli. Now, when one duct supplies to several clusters of alveoli, we call that the alveolar sac. So you can see that cluster right there. Now, not all one alveolar duct supplies air. There are several ducts that are found in this uh, nice little cluster that we call a pulmonary lobule. So let me show you what a pulmonary lobule really is. This whole structure right here that I'm circling is what we refer to as a pulmonary lobule, where we have a whole organized unit or cluster set of alveoli that comes directly off of the respiratory bronchial. We have several of these in your lungs. It's not just one set. So keep that in mind when you're going through this video. Now please look in your Atlas of Anatomy Images book. You can see a great picture of this pulmonary lobule and I would highly re recommend that in your Atlas book you see it labeled as pulmonary lobule. Make sure you know this whole structure is one giant pulmonary lobule and we have several of them in our lungs. Now, unfortunately we don't have the bronchial found here, but your bronchial brings air into my terminal bronchial as you can see here. Uh, one thing to look at with my terminal bronchial is still has patches of cartilage left. But by the time we reach more towards my respiratory bronchioles, their patches are getting even smaller and smaller, so there's hardly any cartilage at this point. And then imagine that we have an alveolar duct, and you can't see it on this model, but this alveolar duct runs right in down my pulmonary lobule and brings air into all my alveoli. Now again, when you have an organized cluster of alveoli that is getting air from my duct, we call that the alveolar sac. Okay, please look at your textbook image of this pulmonary lobule and you can see that we haven't mentioned your vessels yet, so we're going to do that here. Again, you need to know your pulmonary arterial, your pulmonary venule, and your pulmonary capillary beds. So let's take a look at this. And again, remember when you think about blood flow through the heart, imagine where it's going. So for example, when blood flows through the heart, it's going to your right atrium, right? It's your vena cavas are bringing deoxygenated blood to your right atrium. Then where does it go from here? Blood flows from your right atrium to your right ventricle. Okay, so from the right ventricle, where am I going next? 
we're going to travel through my semilunar valve. We're talking about my pulmonary semilunar valve. And we're going to transport blood out through my pulmonary trunk. I'm not doing very well with my writing here, but you can bear with me. And then where from my pulmonary trunk is my blood going to go? To my pulmonary arteries because arteries always carry blood away from the heart. So I'm going to put my pulmonary arteries here. And it's carrying deoxygenated blood, right? So we're always carrying deoxygenated blood. So I'm going to put deox right here, deox blood. OK. So that's what my pulmonary arteries are always going to do, carrying deoxygenated blood from my right ventricle. And eventually, they're carrying them to the lungs. OK, so we always talk about when we get them to the lungs, this is where gas exchange takes place. So from my lungs, I'm going to say that my gas exchange takes place at the capillaries. So in your figure, we can say capillary beds, and that's fine, but it's all the same. These are where gas exchange takes place. And this is where blood gets oxygenated. So once we leave my pulmonary capillaries, where am I going to go now? My blood's going to travel through what we refer to as veins. So I'm going to say that my blood's going to travel to my pulmonary veins. And from my pulmonary veins, they're going to travel back to my heart. And again, if you can remember which chamber that they're going to carry the blood back to, it's going to be my left atrium. And where does blood leave my left atrium? If you hopefully you can remember and you're answering this before I get to it, but it's you're leaving your left atrium and entering my left ventricle. And from my left ventricle, where is it going to go? through my aortic semilunar valve and out to my aorta where it will be transported to the rest of the body. So really my pulmonary veins are carrying oxygenated blood. I'm going to put that in there too. So knowing this and how blood flows from your heart to your lungs, you can see now my pulmonary arterioles bringing blood to my lungs. So it's deoxygenated blood. So it makes sense that it's going to be in blue. Then it gets oxygenated at my pulmonary capillary beds. And then blood leaves my lungs through my pulmonary venule. But again, it's red because it's carrying oxygenated blood. OK, please look at your Atlas of Anatomy Images book at the pulmonary lobule. And you'll be able to identify easily your pulmonary arterial, your pulmonary capillaries, and your pulmonary venule. And again, hopefully this makes sense. Like, this is the only time that you're going to see your arteries or arterioles being in blue and your veins going to be in red. This is the only scenario that this is going to happen. Everywhere else in your body, your arteries are always going to carry blood that are going to be red and your veins will always be blue. But in your pulmonary sec sector of your class or of your body, it's always going to be the opposite.